Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Dumb Dad Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you're a dumb parent. Hi, my name's Evan, and you're a dumb parent. Welcome to Mailbag. Mailbag is back. We're doing it again. You guys sent them in. We're going to read them. Yeah, That's what this is. And specifically because we do so many dumb parenting moments in a row that we need you to help us feel a little bit better about ourselves. So yeah. we appreciate you sending in your stories about the stupid parenting mistakes you've made. You help us feel seen, and we appreciate and it. And we appreciate it. Hey, cheers to you. Cheers to you, Kevin. Dummies. Let's feel normal for a second. Shall I go first? Kick it off, buddy. Kicking it off. Ready? Let's go for this it. This is from David. David W. He says, hi, dads. Here's my recent dumb dad story. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. We got our one-and-a-half-year-old baby girl one of those Nugget play cushions sets for Christmas. Love Nugget. Have we were fortunate well. to partner with them. They were awesome. Yeah, they're And cool. they're also very clutch. Uh, and with that came a lot of discussion about how to rearrange her room so it would fit. <laughs> I think you're in the you're in that a little bit too. You try to stuff we, it in your closet and it didn't go well. We had to get rid of a Lego table. It was a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's worth it because it's a cool thing. So you yeah, gotta yeah. figure out how you're gonna keep it. Of course, I kept dragging my feet on it for weeks until one afternoon my wife and daughter went out and I suddenly felt motivated. Okay. It's easy to do though. When everyone leaves the house, you're like, no, I can get something done. Oh, you know, be a fun thing you, to you do. know what I should do right now? Um, play video games. But instead, mm-hmm. <laughs> I perfectly executed on the plan. My wife and I had gone over before Christmas. Oh, so this is a plan that existed for a while. Mm-hmm. I moved everything where it needed to go, including dragging the gliding chair all the way down the basement, which, not to pat myself on the back, I did myself and without scratching any walls. Kudos, or kudos. breaking your back. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to need to sit in the chair for a while once you're yeah. done. Now, there was plenty of space for our baby to play, and I was feeling quite proud of myself. You see, that's a triggering... That's the moment right Uh there where you realize, I think I must have done something wrong. I'm feeling quite proud of myself in the moment. Yeah, that's not When my wife got home, I ushered her in for the tour of the rearranged room and waited for the applause. And then I realized my dumb dad moment. Oh. You see, I forgot to mention to my wife that I was doing any of this that day. Her first reaction was, last night was the last night I got to rock her in her glider. I'm not ready. Oh. That, exactly. Yeah, I think that's you, a pretty yeah, dumb exactly. dad moment. Fortunately, our kid immediately started playing on her nugget, and my wife quickly adjusted to the change, but I yeah. definitely learned a lesson about how sentimental the nursery is. And then it's probably not the best place in the house for surprises. Yeah. David W. David, cheers to you. Thanks for sending that in. Uh, it's so funny how something like this, and I know we've both done stuff like this, uh-huh. with the best of intentions. <laughs> <laughs> and you just don't quite realize how, even with the best of intentions, an action takes place. You're not thinking about how that it might affect somebody else. Yeah. And that's not like... I don't think that's like a major oversight for him, but it's a good reminder that sometimes, that like, some surprises don't need to be surprises. Think, <laughs> yeah. You know, some that's of them a too, great way to hey, say, hey, I think I'm going to clear out the nursery. I'm going to move the, remove uh-huh. the glider. Oh, yeah, well, sure. I'd love to one more night, whatever. Right, exactly. Tomorrow oh. when you're gone, see, it just, it just, it's a little bit more about just thinking it through, thinking it through. Think twice. Move the chair once. <laughs> yeah. We never really had the glider experience. Uh, you never had a glider. We had a glider. Uh-huh. We didn't like have a... Yeah, we didn't have like a strong, like, I don't know, connection. But, like, we didn't have a story with it. It wasn't like, oh, every night or... It was just like, it always... Stuff sure. always ended up on the couch or while we, in our bed. Either way, the glider had a lot of spit up on it. I mean, can't... Buy nothing that it was great. It's not buy it, burn something. That's what I <laughs> that's where I got rid of it on. <laughs> we had a glider, it was super comfortable. Yeah, super comfortable. Yeah, ours was too. In the way that when you sit in it for the first few times, you're like, okay, now I can't fall asleep in this thing holding my baby. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but it's super comfortable. But I'm too much of a details person. Never like we found the one that was like, first of all, somewhat affordable, they're not cheap. Yeah. Somewhat affordable and like didn't look like a weird glider. 
the rocking chair glider, definitely a glider. Mm. And like, I liked it enough until it was like time to like, well, okay, and now we're downsizing. What are we keeping? I don't think we're holding on to that thing. Same thing. It was more like, it just doesn't look like any other furniture. And it looks exactly like a glider that a right. parent would sit in feeding their baby. Not like, yeah. you know, we used to feed the kid in that, but we loved it so much we kept it. It was like, no, you get, it's got, it's going to go. It's got spit up all over it. Doesn't look like anything else. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> it's more about the change. That's what it, what it it's is. It's more about the change. The change, not in that room anymore. I totally get it. Thanks for sending that in, David. David, thanks for sending that in. <laughs> you dummy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to move right along to Julia sent us a Thank you, Julia. dumb parent moment. Yeah. Hi, Julia. It says, hi, Evan and Kevin. Hello, Julia. I love the Dumb Dad Podcast, Instagram, and approach to life with parenting. It's so good and lightens my day. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Okay, here is my dumb mom moment. And yes, it was a moment, but there were tears had by me. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Well, as long as yeah. someone's crying. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, don't send it in. <laughs> <laughs> so currently and forever trying to teach my son to put things away properly. Like, don't put your shoes in the middle of the floor. Put toilet paper in the toilet bowl. Whoa, that took a turn fast. Wow. Uh, That's a jump. I mean, not wrong. <laughs> no, not wrong. Wipe and now. Just, no, I appreciate the brevity drama. of the message. <laughs> Food goes in your mouth, not on the floor. Where the toilet paper goes. You know, basic. <laughs> yeah, basic stuff. Cut to me putting the ice tray in the freezer. Currently in Australia, it's hot. Stupid hot. I got Is to it make... not hot in Australia sometimes? Yeah, they have a winter. They're allowed. They're allowed one winter a year. I doubt that. Technically defined, uh-huh. maybe. But do you do you think you people are in Australia just like putting on sweaters? Yeah. What do I you think the UN is for? That's so. how they got their winter. That's what <laughs> I don't know. It's just like I'm in. I'm in Australia. I know this is so cliche, but it's like you know. Every corner, there's a scorpion, right? Coming up next to me, something. Spider gonna jump in my hair. Wearing, wearing sweaters. <laughs> I don't want to get chill. Fair. All right, fair. Exoskeletons. Uh, I got to make ice. Kids want ice. I have to deliver immediately. So, mm-hmm. back to me putting the fresh water filled ice tray in the freezer. And, and I just got it in, but not straight. It just is on the angle, but it's it went good. in, and it's all good. A little kinked. I, yeah. I, I, that can happen. Turn around, and my son is watching me. He says, Mom, you didn't do it properly. Let <laughs> me fix it. And I'm like, nah, it's okay. It will freeze, and then we can fix it. Nope, uh-huh. I can do it. Step aside, Mom. Mm-hmm. And he takes out the tray, water everywhere. He yeah. doesn't know why. Mm-hmm. What's this water? And puts the tray back straight. But water... All over. I can't correct him. He's doing what I said to do. Yeah. Putting stuff away properly. Uh Uh-huh. So he goes on with his day, and I'm still cleaning. So basically, don't tell your kids anything, because you'll still have to clean it up anyway. Yeah. Also, the ice tray is up on the top of the freezer, so water went all over the other frozen stuff below, and now they're just extra icy. Yeah. It's only water, but this moment made me cry and now laugh. Thank you for being the coolest dads. Julia. Thank you, Julia. I think I imagine like here's the thing. It was that, that's at the tail end of her day, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it's like the, where it's like it's the worst. Like it's like with kids like washing their hands, mm-hmm. like and cleaning up. You know, I made a spill, and all they're doing is just pushing liquid off of the table. Yeah, and washing their hands. They're just kind of like slapping the soap and then immediately rinsing it watching your kids brush their teeth is one thing and then try to responsibly spit the toothpaste into the sink oh yeah i mean it's just like buckshotting uh-huh. toothpaste all over the mirror it's all like over my toothbrush every time it's a 1990s spit take <laughs> yeah i know and you're just like oh all right and we uh, flossed good, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see that's on the floor. Uh-huh. So let's move on to the mouthwash, and we can just. I'm just gonna pour it on the floor. Add to the game, and then we can get to yeah. bed. I like that she did cover no food on the floor. She didn't mention the water though, so he was confused as to why the water was just on the floor. Well, he was he was also confused because um, this is an ice tray. Why'd you put water in the ice tray? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ice goes in here. You, you dummy! God, parents are so stupid. 
<laughs> also, oh, I get it. So you just put water in here, and then the magically wa- later... The, wa- the ice fairy shows up, and he <laughs> drinks the water and goes, thank you, now I will put ice in there. Nice try. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I'm the fairy showing up here dropping ice cubes, I'm not dropping them into a crooked tray. Step aside. The parents just like, you know what? Don't worry about putting stuff away. We need to talk about yeah. how things work. You know, your kid's washing their hands. They're buckling themselves into their car seat. You just smile and take a deep breath in your Enjoy nose. Enjoy that vacation. And out your mouth. Because just- that's what you have to do. You have to know that they're not going to clean ever. Nope. You have to concede this idea. If they didn't clean up that mess, you were going to clean it up, right? Right. So telling them to clean is teaching them something. It's actually a little break. Then you can clean it up because they're not going to do it right. It's a, gr- it's a good time for you to assess like how you're going to approach your cleaning after they've adjusted where some of it goes. Yeah. Oh, good. okay. Yeah. Well, this next one is from Paula. Thank you for saying this in Paula. Is it Paula or Paula? It's P-A-U-L-A. Paula. Paula. Why did I read it like that? No. I have no idea. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> Hi, Kevin and Evan. I'm a mom of two boys, seven and two years old. Uh huh. That's a seven and two. That's a gap. That's a gap. Just because the seven obviously knows everything, and the two year old is frustrating to be around for the seven year old. I know that. Se- yeah, seven's a. But that was tricky when it was born because the five year old wants to help in those that's coordination. Yeah, not that's where they going there. back to the cleaning. Not yeah. not there. I recently started listening to your podcast and I've been binging it ever since. I got binging right. Oh. Paula was confusing. Yeah. One of my top five dumb parent moments happened just a few days ago. My seven year old told me that he had to go poop. Okay. Great. All right. We're there with you. We're right there with you. As a bit of background, this kid is constantly eating and consequently takes enormous dumps. Oh, Great. We're learning a yeah, lot. Yeah, we are right there with the intimacy of this family. On this day, he asked me to come up, to come in and flush for him. He hates the noise. <laughs> <laughs> he hates the noise of the struggling toilet. I went to the bathroom and walked directly into a wall of the most nauseous smell ever. I immediately went to the window to open it. Whoa. <laughs> Is that their first Kids move? putting in work. <laughs> You give, you he doesn't use the fan is what why, I'm getting get, getting here. He's, that's why you don't buy those kids' protein shakes. <laughs> you see them at Costco, yeah. don't buy them. No, don't buy them. They, yeah, I know, you're calling it chocolate milk. Yeah, It's just, a, it's, it turns them into a brick layer later on. I immediately went to the window to open it, then reached for the bathroom aerosol spray. Ooh, what? This is really bad. She's prepared already. There's, I think there's like a... <laughs> 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 Before, yeah, struggling to find where struggling. the f- <laughs> I put out the can in front of me and sprayed as quickly as I could. I sprayed directly into my face. Oh, that there, Kevin, tells you how bad it was. She couldn't even focus on where the nozzle is pointing, just right into her own face. They also did that, and apropos of this podcast, in the movie Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Boy, isn't that on point. I quickly closed my eyes to prevent the spray from getting in and yelled out in shock. (laughs) My yelling must have spooked my kiddo. Can't imagine why. Because when I opened my eyes, he was now at the doorway heading out with his pants and undies down to his feet. Oh, no. Freaking out that something was really wrong. Because it was. He's freaking out something really really wrong. I might help to think of the situation as if it was out of a Will Ferrell movie because that was pretty much what it was. No, as Kevin already told us, it's from a Jim Carrey movie. Some Jim Carrey movie or Monsters Inc. <laughs> Mike Mike was out. Good shot. Shoots himself in the eye. That is right. That's spray. a good shot. I told him I was okay and also had to calm myself down. <laughs> Luckily, my eyes were okay, but despite my best efforts, I could smell the lavender bathroom spray on me for the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> not the not the most delicate of perfumes. I told my husband what happened later, and we died with laughter. He told me I had to share it with you guys, so there you have it. From a dumb mom, overwhelmed by stank. Keep up the good work from Paula. 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 Thank you, Paula. Thank you, uh, Love Paula. that story. I just go, I would, I mean, I go right back to like the the, the chaos of the moment and then spraying. Spraying your Spray. face, yourself it's in the face. It's actually very Mike Wazowski. It's very that. It's very Mike Wazowski. It's much more dangerous. It's also, it's also very that like, <laughs> oh, you're you know you're you've got a 
you've got pain here. Let's redirect the pain. Yeah, my exactly. arm hurts. Let me punch my leg. <laughs> punch your leg. Yeah. <laughs> how's it how's it feel now? Oh, that smells terrible. <laughs> yeah, that Can't smells smell terrible, it. and I'm blind. <laughs> Paula. That's brilliant. Thank you, Paula. And she also, even she even titled it "User Submission." Paula's an OG. She's, <laughs> she appreciates appreciates what's going on. I love that. <laughs> Paula, thank you. It's good. All right, this one is from Christy. Thank Christy. you, Christy. Thanks for writing in to the Dumb Dad Podcast. Hi, Dumb Dads. First, thank you for your show. My husband and I love the relatable content. Although he and I have a plethora of dumb parent moments. Mm -hmm. This particular story is about my dad. Ooh. So it's a dumb dad moment. Wow. From a direct witness. Yeah. (laughs) A direct account. Yeah. Yeah. Although, I was going to say, what is it, a reputable witness, but... Whatever we're about to read, you know the dad's going to go, that's not how it happened. That's not how it happened. Well, first of all. (laughs) (laughs) So this this story takes place on Christmas. Okay. 1994. Ooh, right. The height of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. And all things say by the bell. Yes. Vanilla Ice was (laughs) there. On the way down. I was 12. (laughs) 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 I was 12 and my sister was 14. My sister had been pestering my parents all year for a hamster. As Christmas approached, my dad decided this was an appropriate time to acquiesce. He purchased a hamster a few days before the big moment and decided to store it at his friend's house so as not to spoil the surprise. Mm -hmm. On Christmas Eve, he went to pick it up. The cage had a giant plastic wheel on the outside where the hamster could access it through a little hole leading from the inside. Okay. When my dad... Sort arri- of a bay window yeah. situation. Is a what you're very nice, you. something to read a book, curl yeah. up, watch Just the Just taking the sun on a late afternoon with a... Th- the neighbors go for a run and be like, oh, I should probably start should working probably out go again. get another martini. <laughs> <laughs> Finish this memoir. <laughs> When my dad arrived at said friend's house, he noticed that the hamster was inside the wheel and seemed unable to get back into its cage. Of course, the two men had to help. They had to help. Yeah. Two. Yeah. <laughs> how many? How many men does it take to get a hamster? We're gonna find out together. After studying the wheel for a moment and trying a few unsuccessful techniques, they decided that the best course of action would be to tug on the wheel as hard as they could. So that's what they did. Oh, okay. Let's see what happens. I'll tell you one thing, Kevin. This force is get, always force the right. Force is always <laughs> the, the, the. If you force something to happen, the consequence is not, not often in your it's favor. Not, I'm 38 years old. I've learned to pull back when you're trying to open a bag of chips, going, nope, that's too much force. Or at least purse your lips together and close your eyes because there's yeah. chips about <laughs> no. to go everywhere. No, because nobody's going to help me pick them up. <laughs> The wheel popped off with great force and flung all the way across the room, <laughs> landing heavily with the poor little hamster still inside. All right, so the hamster. Of course it did. So the hamster didn't escape. I, th- I was imagining it like broke out and, you know, took off. <laughs> yeah. The hamster was still alive, but seemed a bit shaken. I mean, it literally was. Yeah, quite literally. Being Christmas Eve, my dad could neither take it to a vet nor purchase a new hamster. Mm -hmm. So on Christmas morning, my sister got a hamster with the caveat. Little did we know, Pinkerton, all right, we named it, sustained some severe injuries. He succumbed (laughs) to internal bleeding two days later. Of course, my dad purchased another hamster who one night escaped from his cage and was mauled to death by the family cat only a few weeks after purchase. (laughs) But my dad doesn't have to take the blame for that one. Second one. <laughs> Moral of the story, we are not hamster people. <laughs> Thank you for all your candor. It's great to know other parents are out there. Keep up the great work, Christy. Wow. We Where do we start? That's a wild one. Um, yeah. We had a ham- Poor hamsters. <laughs> We had a hamster when I was a kid. I was, I'm the youngest of three brothers. Uh-huh. And like, this is one of those moments where like, I guess it's my fault, but also definitely, definitely my brother's fault. Yeah, they yeah. Had their ham- He's not here, Kevin. They had their <laughs> Laid ham- on thick. Well, you tell me. You can tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. They had their hamster out of the cage. Let's start there. They I'm had- assuming your parents pre-approved this. Outside. Uh, uh 
outside on the house. On top of uh, the car. Like it was like a sedan. Oh. So like the so hamster's just chilling there. Oh my gosh. You have so many red flags in a row just now. No. I, so far, I haven't come into the story yet. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm like there, but I haven't made any decisions. And so some of the neighborhood kids were there because like when where we g- grew up, whoever was in your neighborhood, those were your friends. And <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think that's most kids. You just, so they, yeah, just deal with their, yeah, just, you're just their friends. So then they all decide to like go down the street and do something. Uh-huh. And like one of my brothers shouts back to me, Kev, stay behind, keep an eye on the hamster, which is still on the top of the car. Uh huh. And they leave. And I'm just like, how old are you? I don't, very young, very young. Like, I can't, I mean, I don't know. But very How young. How do you feel? Young enough to, to have had this thought. Well, no, I want to come. And then just like. <laughs> and then left. <laughs> and just left. No, how is that on you The hamster is gone forever. And everybody's like, you left the hamster? The one out of the cage on the car that you left with at best a six-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And in, in, in what way are they blaming you for this? <laughs> yeah, they bring it up every once in a while. And I go, eh, but I don't. You're not even paying me to babysit. Yeah, exactly. No. You get what you that's pay on, for. Yeah, that's on your ding-dong brother and his friends. <laughs> no way, dude. No way. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, well, thanks for uh, what, throwing your dad under the bus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Appreciate throwing it. Throwing your dad out of the cage. Poor Pinkerton. We painted this beautiful life that he was living in this bay window <laughs> until it was ejected. <laughs> All right, let's move on. We got from one from Alyssa here. Okay. She says, hey, dads. While I have a stockpile of dumb parenting moments to choose from, this particular one was a real doozy. That's what I want to hear. I have two kids aged two and five. Okay. We live on an acreage, and it was time to get our dog spayed. So I made the appointment for the dog at a neighboring city half hour away with the intent of also making it a fun day for the kids and me. Certainly not going to be for the dog. Kind of a, yeah, weird (laughs) combination of ideas, but sure, let's go with it. After dropping off the dog, we swung by the ever sought after park that we had driven by many times. Love it. But never had time to stop. So, so far, this is actually, this, I I agree with this. Good idea. We're going to go purposely hurt the dog, but if I distract you and go to the, Uh (laughs) armed with juice and chips, I was adamant we were going to have fun. That is capital F U N. Okay. I thought to myself, you are killing it today. Little did I know, I was about to be royally humbled. Okay. Do you see the theme here, Kevin? A lot of these, as soon as the parent feels like, I've solved it, I'm a champion, I'm proud of myself, you just don't know what's on the other side of that hill. You're only really allowed to have that thought when the kids are asleep Uh and you've laid down in bed. And even then... That's risky because I was supposed to sign that thing. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say like you could feel that way like five years after something happened and then still prepare for this. The account of the story to be different. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) I.e. the hamster. Mm -hmm. As we pulled up to the park, it was readily apparent that there were some there was some major construction happening adjacent to the play area. Of course. Jackhammers and any other piece of noisy equipment. You name it. It was there. Well, that's great for the kids. Kids weren't phased. By the noise or whatsoever, they just wanted to get on the play structure. Uh huh. We had barely stepped onto the playground before I realized I needed to use the washroom immediately, mm. only to see that the park washroom was part of the renovation overhaul. Mm. You guessed it, Kevin. Leaving the porta potty, which has never been described as a washroom, a destroyed construction site porta potty. Feeling it unsafe to leave my kids outside waiting for me, especially next to an excavation, I made the game time decision to haul them into the gross porta potty with me, which they, of course, touched everything. And to my dismay, there was no soap or sanitizer to be found anywhere. Was there an aerosol? <laughs> Lavender scented. Uh-huh. Once out, I explained to my kids that ships would have to wait, but I cracked open the juice boxes to appease them. In the seconds it took for my five-year-old to squeeze juice all over himself, we were quick to learn the rampant wasps at this particular park. While I was trying to save my frantic turn, (laughs) while I was trying to save my frantic juice-soaked son from the growing swarm, there was a slight break 
and the jackhammer racket, just enough for me to hear my two-year-old daughter crying. She had tripped, face-planted in the gravel, and was now also a wasp target covered in juice. What is happening? I, this, it's unraveling. This is absolutely unraveling. <laughs> we hadn't even spent 10 minutes at the park, but at this point I gathered my two bawling, sticky children and took them to the van, queued up a movie for them on my phone, and drove them home. Don't worry, we went back and got the dog later. <laughs> you forgot about the dog too, didn't you? <laughs> no, I was... <laughs> I just imagine them picking up the dog going, how are yeah. you doing, sweetie? We had the worst day. And she's like, I don't want to hear it. Because <laughs> if I cough, it's a problem. You said I was getting a haircut. <laughs> you didn't get a haircut down there? That dumpster fire of a park adventure was a really good reminder that no matter how perfect of a mom I want to be, that's just how it works out sometimes. And that's okay. I'm still a good mom. That's right. You sure are, Allie. You are. And you guys are great dads. Thanks for the laughs. Thank you for that submission. That <laughs> is so good. The best part is that it's like it, it is less than 10 minutes. How quickly it goes from let's have fun to like, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. How you want a screen? <laughs> We're done mm-hmm. in 10 minutes. I did my part and nature said no. <laughs> nah, not today. Yeah. We're good. Why don't you just go home, reset, and try again tomorrow? Yeah, it's going to be a no for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So fantastic. So good. All right. The last one of this mailbag comes from Christopher. Hello, Chris. Hey, Chris. It says, hi, guys. Just stumbled upon your Instagram and thought it was hilarious. My wife works Full time, I'm a firefighter with a strange schedule that allowed me to do most of the day to day stuff with the kids while they were growing up. On this, that's a, that's amazing. That is amazing. Thank you for your service. And uh, firefighters are cool. Firefighters are cool, man. They're up there with uh, they're up there with the garbage men. Everybody loves them. That's true. That's and right. Everybody's like cool trucks, cool guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you said it best. That's exactly right. On this particular day, I decided to be the nice guy and wash my wife's car for her. Cool. Nice guy. You know, kind of returning the favor of her hard work. He knows how to use a hose. He's got nothing else to do. I mean, he's a pro with it. (laughs) He knows how to use a hose. Can you imagine being a firefighter and then turning on a garden hose? Or uses the fire hose and just blows out the windows. (laughs) Guess what? It's it's down to the primer, so you can choose which color you want to be. It's a convertible now. (laughs) I thought that my then three-year-old son would think going through the car wash, all right, then we went through the car wash, and the car really needed it, would be pretty fun, but almost, I mean, it is. That's it's, what you all think until your kid doesn't it's like It's hit it. or miss. <laughs> my nephews love it, and my son, who's the same age as my nephew, hates it with a passion. So is my daughter, who's seven. Yeah, it's, all you need is an older sibling to tell them we're being swallowed by an alien, uh-huh. and it's pretty much trauma until you're 10. That's it forever. <laughs> But almost as soon as we entered, he started fussing. As we went in deeper, he really started losing it, throwing one of the worst fits I had ever heard. I just kept saying, almost out, everything's okay. Just gripping the steering wheel so tightly. Yeah. <laughs> or it's just like doom We're just going to get through it. Yeah. <laughs> when we finally got through the wash, I turned around to look at him in his car seat in the back. He was covered from head to toe with soap suds. Oh, no. I'd actually There it is. Yeah. I'd accidentally left his window open about four to five inches. Whoops. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> Let's say it together, Kevin. Chris, turn around. Yeah. Turn <laughs> Check. The, there's a mirror, yeah. a rear view mirror. Just look. You didn't feel any of it. <laughs> you can smell it. You didn't hear it. Smell it. It's gotta be like some part. It's louder over here. Uh huh. <sighs> it's rough, man. But was it like one of those rainbow car washes? The kid looked like really cool. Maybe a little tie dye action. Maybe. I will. S- I don't like to say this, Kevin, but uh-huh. I think you kind of got what you deserved. <laughs> But you at least you but you avoided the you avoided the late afternoon or, or late evening bath. Uh-huh. So you think about sometimes it's a give and take situation. And you got to wash the car seat. And to wash I the mean, car seats clean now. Above and beyond is what you yeah, tell your I wife. I take everything I just said back. 
That was a smart move, actually. Take smart dad. out. Yeah. Ring out the clothes. <laughs> use that super vacuum that you get to use. The, you know, you get to five minutes. With five that minutes thing free. For free. And you just vacuum up all them suds. And I bet that car seat looked good. Five minutes free. Are you out of your mind? In what way? You pay for a car wash. Uh-huh. And then you get to go over, pull over, and park at the vacuum and use it for five minutes for free. Yeah. In what world has anybody ever used it for only five minutes? Oh, sure. Zero. Zero. Nothing. Oh, see, I never. Do. I what do you set a, a timer? No, I just, I don't want to inconvenience people, so I kind of treat it like a NASCAR, like like a pit stop. Like I'm just. <laughs> a pit crew? I'm doing a very efficient job, but I'm getting it done fast. Realize what the vacuum's not going to pick up and move on. <laughs> that <laughs> is a great place to end it. <laughs> Thank you for sending in your parenting submissions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. You can always send in more submissions. Email us, dumbdadpod at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram where our handles are at the dumb dads, which is our handle on Instagram, right. TikTok, YouTube, and threads. But you can watch these mailbags, full episodes of the podcast on our YouTube channel. Again, the dumb dads. Um, you can subscribe to those channels and get some uh, exclusive long form videos. And uh, rate and review this podcast if you guys haven't done so already. We appreciate it. Keep an eye out for the next mailbag. Thanks for sending them in, and uh, stay dumb out there. Stay dumb out there. Keep it real. All right. (laughs) Until next time. Bye. Welcome to the world, little one. Welcome to life. How do I stop this?